Hello and welcome to our Witcher Vale Benefice service. My name is Cassa and I'm one of the ministers in the team. We are still in the Easter season, which runs from Easter Sunday to Ascension Day, which is towards the end of May. And in the Easter season, on the Sundays of that season, we look at the accounts of Jesus's resurrection appearances to his friends, the disciples, and to many other people. The account we're gonna to hear today focuses on Peter. Peter who denied Jesus and is carrying a huge burden of guilt. I don't know about you, but there are times when I feel guilty about the mistakes and things that I have done, which I'm not proud of. And those burdens of guilt can weigh on our hearts, can't they? Um, and the story today is about how the, those burdens can be lifted, lifted by God's love and forgiveness. So let's pray. Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord God, we pray that you would direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our first hymn today, that wonderful Easter hymn, All Heaven Declares the Glory of the Risen Lord. So our reading today is from John's Gospel, chapter 21, and as I said at the beginning, we're focusing on Peter. Do you remember Peter who denied knowing Jesus at all three times before the cock crowed, just before Jesus, as Jesus was arrested? So this is the story after Jesus' resurrection. Peter uh, is weighed down by the burden of guilt and shame, and he is with the other disciples and they decide to go fishing and when they're fishing they meet with Jesus. Afterwards Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them and they said We'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he'd taken it off, and jumped into the water. 
The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger and dressed yourself and went where you wanted, but when you are older, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. During Lent this year, I was thinking about guilt and forgiveness. I was reflecting on the mistakes I have made in my own life, the decisions that I've made uh, and wish I hadn't made, uh, the things I wish I hadn't done. Um, and whilst reflecting on these things, I was thinking about the forgiveness of God. And I was struck by the thought that often the barrier to God's loving forgiveness in our lives is our own inability to forgive ourselves to love ourselves as much as God loves us and therefore be able to forgive ourselves. I meet lots of people who are weighed down by the burden of guilt and shame from having to make de decisions and uh, that in circumstances that somehow feel wrong. Um, and this, this guilt and this shame that people carry around can be a block to being able to be at peace and to be able to move on with their lives. Our gospel account today takes us through an engagement with guilt, with not being able to forgive ourselves. Peter weighed down, Simon Peter as he's known in the passage, weighed down by the burden of choosing to deny that he ever knew Jesus three times at the when Jesus is, is arrested. Peter, Simon Peter, acts out of instinct, really. Um, it wasn't premeditated. He didn't think to my, himself beforehand, oh, I'm going to deny Jesus because I've had enough of him. He was scared, as we often are in, in situations where we might make the wrong decision. And he acted accordingly. But afterwards, when the full force of what he'd done had come down upon him, he must have felt horrible. I don't know whether you've had that feeling, but I've had that feeling. And it just goes around in your mind, the mistake that you made and wishing that you'd done something different and holding on to this guilt. How could Simon Peter possibly be forgiven? Especially when just before this, he had promised that he would follow Jesus even to his death. How could he forgive himself? How could Jesus forgive him? He was a follower of Jesus. He should be able to do better. I think it's important at this point to remember that one of the key themes in John's gospel is who is Jesus 
And what does it mean to be a disciple, a follower of the way of Jesus? So in this account of Simon Peter meeting the risen Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias, tells us something about who Jesus is and what it means for us to be his followers. So what can we learn from Jesus in the story that we've heard today? We're given a sense of the heaviness of Peter's burden at the beginning of the passage with his decision to go fishing. Um, these disciples, these friends of Jesus have been a lot, through a lot in these days um, and they're really confused, unsure of what's happening. Um, they've seen Jesus but he's different, he's not the same as he was before, quite often they don't recognise him initially um, and I just and I wonder whether Peter doesn't know where he stands. So he decides to do the one thing that he does know, uh, he's going to go fishing, and it's here in his everyday life, the normal things that, that Simon Peter does, that he meets the risen Jesus uh, and something amazing happens. When Simon Peter realises it's Jesus, he rushes to his. his. His instinct this time wins over and it is the right instinct. He runs to or rushes, probably swims or wades, uh, to Jesus whom he loves. Uh, loves as his teacher, loves as his friend. And um, he, we're told in the Gospel account that um, he had to get dressed. It was obviously easier to fish relatively naked, so he, he puts on his clothes. Um, and we are told that this huge amount of fish um, had, is also this miraculous catch of fish. There's lots of details in the Gospel um, which helps us to know that this is an account of people who were actually there. They were giving all the information and the fine detail of, of what happened that day. So after they've eaten, Jesus takes the opportunity to relieve Peter of the massive burden that he's carrying. Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me more than these? Jesus' approach to forgiveness is that of the Father's love. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. So Simon Peter, loved by God, is forgiven and he loves Jesus, if he loves Jesus, as he most certainly does, even given his previous action of betrayal, he should forgive himself for what's happened. Jesus asks Peter if he loves him three times, mirroring the three denials by Peter, wiping them away. Imagine chalk on a board being wiped away each time. I denied you, I'm wiping it away. I denied you, I'm wiping it away. And this underpins that the love of Jesus can wipe away our guilt and burdens and that it's through uh, the, his love and our trust in him that we are made free. So what's the purpose of this freedom from sin and guilt? Well, <coughs> as Jesus tells Peter, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep, and the final thing, follow me. In one sense, this message is just for Peter. It's his instructions, what is what he's to do now. Um, and he is to build Jesus's church, he's to build the kingdom of God. He is to care for his people and feed his people. But in another sense, this message is for us too. It is through forgiveness, through our acceptance that we are forgiven, from every mistake, every bad decision that we make, that we are freed from the paralysis of guilt and shame. And therefore this freedom enables us to go out and love our neighbour as ourselves, to serve our community and to help build God's kingdom in our local community. So I wonder over the next week whether we put ourselves in Peter's position talking to Jesus, to imagine ourselves being asked by Jesus if we love him. Do we love him enough to forgive ourselves for the mistakes we've made? Do we love him enough to allow ourselves uh, to be free of the walls that we build between ourselves and God? And I wonder if we take some time to reflect on what that freedom means for us in following him 
in our everyday uh, business of our lives. How are we called to serve him in the world? Let's pray. God of love, give us compassion and mercy, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for speaking into our hearts through the teaching of Jesus today. We pray for the lifting of the burden of guilt in our lives. Help us know, Lord, your loving forgiveness and give us courage to forgive ourselves. Lift the weight of these failures, Lord, and give us your grace to start afresh this day. God of love, we pray for all those in positions of power that they may govern with compassion and mercy and seek to alleviate the needs of the poor in our society. We pray for all aid agencies and charities in this country and across the world seeking to relieve the suffering of the poorest. May they have the resources they need for their work and show us how we can support them. We pray for our communities for all being stirred up to meet the needs of their neighbours. We particularly think of those hosting Ukrainian refugees at this time and those seeking to support Afghan refugees. Help us to have our eyes open to those in need locally and to get involved with meeting those needs. Lord, we pray for all who are suffering at this time, those who are ill, those who are bereaved, all who weep, we pray that they may find healing, strength and peace. We join all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn reminds us that it is God's grace that brings us freedom from guilt. We pray that God will grant us wisdom and courage to serve our neighbour. God bless you. Have a good week.